Welcome back to Sports Blitz Live. Luke Robinson here, now joined by Brian Matthews of Auburn Undercover. And, of course, this segment is brought to you by Sperlin Recycling. I always want to thank the good people out at Sperlin Recycling, Brad and Samantha Sperlin. Couldn't ask for better sponsors than Sperlin Recycling. Well, Brian, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing terrific. Well, listen, I know Auburn got a huge commitment this past week from Carl Lawson, and that's got to really bolster Auburn in terms of uh, the rankings for Auburn Undercover, right? Yeah, in fact, they moved up to top ten, I think, last of the commitment, and then Notre Dame got three or four and, and leapfrogged frog, them. But it's still real early, of course. Uh, you know, some schools, I think Michigan has close to 15 commitments already. You know, Auburn's up to six now, which is the most we've ever had at this point in time. So, uh, you know, the recruiting rankings really don't matter a lot until we get into January and, and, and then the signing day when everybody has a similar number of commitments. But I think Auburn's off a terrific start. Uh, Carl Lawson is just a – Really physical, uh, fast, quick. He's got a terrific body for a defensive end. He's going to be able to put on some more weight, uh, but not get too big and, and be a, uh, you know, one of those guys that can compete for a starting position once Corey Lemire moves on to the NFL. Let's talk about some more news going on in Auburn right now. Of course, spring practice is underway for both Alabama and Auburn. Uh, Gabe Wright. Now, this is a player that really came on strong towards the end of last season. Uh, what's the story going on with Gabe Wright right now? Well, you're right. Uh, he, he was really coming up in the last season. Uh, to me, I, I thought he had a good chance of winning that starting, one of those starting defensive tackle jobs this spring, but uh, hurt his foot in practice number two. I think his foot or his ankle, I'm not sure which. But um, uh, He's out for the rest of the spring now. Uh, it's, I don't think it's anything serious that's going to uh, keep him out of, you know, some more workouts and, and fall practice once they get underway. But uh, uh, for now, uh, he's on the sideline. That just means more reps for guys like, uh, uh, you know, Along Angela Blackson and, and some of those other younger guys, uh, uh, Jabron Niles is a guy who registered last year. Devontae Sigler is a guy who's up to 290 plus pounds. Uh, you know he can play defensive end still at that side, but I think he's his future is at defensive tackle also. And Clint Mosley, I, I understand he's got a bit of a shoulder issue. Talk about that a little bit. He does. Uh, in fact, he did not uh, practice uh, on Monday. He was out there, but he didn't throw the ball and. Uh, you know, I have a feeling this is something that's probably going to linger with him uh, during the spring and really limit uh, his reps and his opportunity to go out there and compete for the position. Um, and, and on the other hand, I think uh, this is a, uh, helpful to Kyle Frazier. This is just that many more reps to the first team uh, for Kyle, uh, that much more time to work one-on-one -on -one with Coach Leffler. And this is really his big chance. This is a huge spring for Kyle. You know, he's played in that um, shotgun spread type offense his whole career. And uh, now you're in the offense with left where he has to go under center. We don't know what percent it's going to be, but I think it's going to be 50 or more uh, percent of the time. So uh, it's a big learning uh, spring for Cal Frazier, a real opportunity for him. Now, Auburn had a couple of visitors in today, did they not? Uh, who are they, and can you tell us about them? Yeah, Jared Davis is a really fast, um, athletic outside linebacker from uh, Camden County, uh, Georgia. Uh, he's about 6'2", 210. Uh, he had a terrific visit today, his first time up to Auburn. I met with Chiswick, met with Van Gorder, met with uh, uh, Coach Thigpen. Um, uh, Auburn is in great shape for him right now, still wants to take some more visits and, and probably have a decision here, uh, you know, sometime uh, in the summer, uh, start of fall. And then Ethan Posick is a big offensive tackle from Illinois. He's one of the top uh, offensive linemen nationally. Uh, of course, this is his first visit down here. He said he had a really good trip, uh, got to see everything. Uh, meet with Coach Chizik and all the guys. So uh, I think Auburn made a big impression on him. How about Brian Van Gorder? What do you think his uh, influence has been so far on the defense? Have you seen a noticeable improvement? Well, you know, it's hard to say the defense has improved just because, you know, we see 20 minutes, 30 minutes of, of two practices and two of those were without pads on. And, uh, you know, this is a learning experience for them, especially early on. But I think it's, uh, you know, I think you can assume that Auburn's going to be much better on defense just with all the guys they got coming back. Uh, they have almost every starter coming back. Uh, plus, we got some young guys, a, a lot of young guys that got their feet wet uh, over the last two years and are coming in and compete uh, with some of those older guys. And, you know, defensive tackle is a great example. Um, Jeffrey Whitaker and Kenneth Carter have played a lot of football. You know, they're both juniors, but uh, they're not guaranteed starting spots. You know, I've now mentioned Gabe Wright. Uh, you know, I think uh, he has a great shot of winning a job. It won't be this spring, obviously. It has to be in the fall. But guys like, uh, you know, Devontae Sigler and 
uh, Big Angelo. Uh, they both have uh, terrific chances of beating out some guys that have, uh, you know, with more experience than they have. How about the running back position? I know that Ontario McCaleb's coming back, but he's not your prototypical between the tackles SEC guy. What about Mike Blakely and some other guys that may get some time there? Yeah, um, and really, it's a, it's a four horse race there at tailback. You know, Trey Mason is the guy I think you know coming out of the bowl game uh, did really well there, and he's probably the leader in the in the clubhouse right now. But uh, still, a long way to go in that competition. Uh, you know, I, I don't consider Ontario. Uh, a good guy that's going to be an all, all down back. They're just going to have to find different ways to use him, you know, in the offense as they have before. And, uh, you know, they got some, some young guys like Mike Blakely and, uh, be real interested to see what he can do this spring. I know he's been really itching to get out there and compete for a job and, you know, show what he can do. And I, and I, I think, uh, the early reviews have been good, but, you know, just one day in pass, it's hard to draw too many conclusions. Let's talk a little bit about Auburn basketball just for a second. I know they had two key transfers, uh, Willie uh, Kowasi and then Bernard Marino. I don't believe Marino played all too much this year, if at all. I, I certainly don't remember him. But uh, Kowasi had some good moments in blocking shots, at least. Uh, what's the story there? And, and do you think Auburn's going to be able to fill those two roster spots with some other incoming signees? Yeah, in fact, they are. They've, uh, they've got a class now of uh, uh, four signees and one commitment. And they're like looking for one more big man, uh, you know, to bring in in the spring period to sort of uh, top off that guy. So if they do that, they're going to be uh, full uh, with all 13 scholarships. And, you know, I think losing Kwasi is a, is a loss for Auburn. But him and Marino are best friends. You know, they sort of do everything together. And uh, they just didn't feel like they fit in, fit in well enough at Auburn. Uh, Marino redshirted uh, this year after suffering a, a preseason injury. Uh, so they're going to move on, I would assume, maybe a smaller school. Uh, so they can, you know, get out there and play. I know Marina probably doesn't want to sit out another year. We'll have to wait and see on that. But, um, uh, yeah, basketball-wise, you know, Auburn has a chance to be much, much better next year if they can get a, a point guard uh, to step up. You know, Perez Ward is certainly not going to be back. But uh, the other positions, uh, they got a lot of talent, a lot of experience coming back. And, you know, they've got uh, one of their signees, the big seven-footer who led the uh, junior colleges, Ashton Tatum. And uh, he led the junior colleges in block shots and, and was – top five or six and rebound. So he's a guy to come in and help right away. Well, hey, ba break up the Auburn baseball team. You take two out of three uh, from LSU. That doesn't mean quite as much today as it meant uh, just a few short years ago. But still, uh, the baseball team making some strides. They are. And I don't think anybody that saw them play <laughs> early in the year would have uh, would have expected, you know, this type of start, a 4 and 2 start in the SEC. And, and uh, it's a really, really talented, uh, you know, the SEC has got you know, six or seven teams that uh, have a shot at hosting regional this year, so it's a really, really a good league. And uh, you know, the thing with Auburn is they're getting good pitching, which they really haven't had in uh, you know seven or eight years from the starters, and, and they're developing a little bit of depth um, in that bullpen, and they're just finding ways to win. Uh, you know, with these dead, dead and bats now, you're not getting all these high scoring games. You're, you're getting in a lot of four, three, three, two uh, type games, and Auburn is just finding ways to. Uh, eke out that extra run. Uh, they're playing good defense behind these pitchers and, and do all, doing almost everything right. In fact, they had a chance to sweep LSU. They played great defense all weekend, and then they had uh, you know that one bad inning where they had uh, an error and gave up three unearned runs. If it wasn't for that, they would have swept LSU. Well, Brian, thanks so much for being with us, bud, and, and thanks to Sperling Recycling for sponsoring this segment. Why don't you tell folks how they can sign up for 24-7 Sports or AuburnUndercover.com. Absolutely. They can check us out at auburnundercover.com. Sign up for our 30-day free trial. That'll get you through spring practice, get you to A-Day. That'll be another big uh, recruiting weekend for Auburn. And, uh, you know, we're cranking out right now, I'd say, six to seven to eight stories a day, especially on a practice day like today was. I know we had two videos, uh, two or three stories already, a photo gallery. I've got two more recruiting stories I've got to write right now and put up there. So uh, we're just blowing out our coverage right now. Well, listen, thanks so much again, Brian. We really do appreciate you being on with us, and we hope to have you on again soon, okay? All right. Take care, guys. Appreciate it. That was Brian Matthews with AuburnUndercover.com. Certainly do it.